After just coming out of the general elections in February 25th, when I hear that song, it reminds me of a song that we had for our campaign, a song that was done by a young man, and that was uh, our, our party's name, Virgin Islands Party, and our party's uh, motto also is, forward whatever, backwards never, one direction forward together. I like the energy today. I like the colors on display. I like your drive to want more. So that victory for unity, team unity, is sure. It is with distinct pleasure and honor that I accept your invitation to be present today and to share in this special occasion for your party. And I promise you, I won't be too long. In spite of my busy schedule, passing a budget, the first budget uh, on Friday, just Friday gone, and a whole week of budget debates at home, accepting your invitation for me was a no-brainer. Allow me to help get you laser focused. Allow me to tell you a story that's well known so that in the spirit of unity, although we're here with Pam, that Pam, along with CCM and PLP, can remain laser focused on the task at hand. That story that I'm going to tell you, most of you know it, but it's important for Pam to understand. It's important for CCM to understand. And it's important for PLP to understand. That story is the rat trap. And I read it for you because you need to understand that unity is strength. And that when your neighbor house is on fire, you have to throw water on yours. So you, Pam, cannot mind its own business and don't help CCM. Pam cannot mind its own business and don't help Pam and PLP. And PLP cannot mind its own business and don't help. Because if you think that the rat trap was for Pam alone, you might be surprised what will happen. And that story goes, a rat looked through a crack in the wall to see a farmer and his wife opening a package. What food might it contain? He was aghast to discover that it was a rat trap. Retreating to the back barnyard, the rat proclaimed the warning. There's a rat trap in the house. A rat trap in the house. The chicken clucked and scratched, raised her head and said, excuse me, Mr. Rat, I can tell you this is a grave concern to you, but it's of no consequence to me. I cannot be bothered by it. The rat turned to the pig and told him, there's a rat trap in the house. There's a rat trap in the house. I'm so very sorry, Mr. Rat, said the pig, and the pig sympathized with him, but there's nothing I can do about it but pray. Be assured that you are in my prayers. The rat turned to the cow. She said, like, wow, Mr. Rat, a rat trap. I am in grave danger, duh. So the rat returned to the house and headed down dejected to face the farmer's rat trap alone. That very night, a song was heard throughout the house like the song of a rat trap cat, cat catching its prey. The farmer's wife rushed to see what was caught. In the darkness, she did not see that it was a venomous snake whose tail the trap had caught. The snake bit the farmer's wife. The farmer rushed her to the hospital. She returned home with a fever. 
Now everyone you notice that you treat a fever with fresh chicken soup. So the farmer took his hatchet to the barnyard for the soup's main ingredient. His wife's sickness continued so that friends and neighbors came to sit with her around the clock to feed them the farmer butchered the pig. The farmer's wife did not get well. She died. And so many people came for her funeral that the farmer had the cow slaughtered to provide meat for all of them to eat. So the next time you hear that someone, whether I be CCM, whether I be PLP, or whether I be PAM, that there's a rat trap in the band, you pay particular attention. Because the basic concept of our story that is we are all connected. And the popular phrase I came to remind you about things that you know already that you just need to be reminded of. United you stand. And divided you will fall. This story says that what affects me today will at some time tomorrow also affect you. Keep the main thing the main thing. Be mindful that three of you working together as one will yield the victory you seek. It is better than walking for three than hoping to unite as one afterwards. Unity is strength. Unity always brings change and sustains success. We are inspired, at least I am, and many others who watch on in St. Kitts and Nevis by the way the People's Action Movement led the efforts for change in St. Kitts four years ago. Can I tell you it is much easier to band together to go after something than it is to stay together to keep it? Your success and your victory inspired us in the Virgin Islands Party, the party which I lead now. We have learned adequate lessons on how to bounce back from adversity, how to overcome uncertainty, and how to give new meaning to people's dreams and aspirations for change and renewal. I also was more than excited to come because your leader for PAM, Honorable Sean Richards, has been there for us on many occasions including the final weekend of our recent campaign. And on the eve of what is now our historic victory at the polls in the British Virgin Islands. And so I bring you warm and fraternal greetings from our party, the Virgin Islands Party, which in February was returned to power after eight long years in the wilderness. We were indeed proud and pleased with the historic victory coming four short years after over complete de devastation at the polls and two short years after a split and shake up in our VIP political party. In fact, in the 13 candidates that we feel for the election that ran, 11 were newcomers, one ran before, and only myself was ever elected. And we band together and won an election. I share my experience with you, not to boast, but to encourage. We were given up many times as dead. We were given as many times as I heard tonight as they say that Pam is dead. We were already pronounced dead. But we prove that with dynamic leadership and energetic team, bringing fresh ideas to the table, and a message that reson resonated with important ingredients in the turnaround. These were the important ingredients in the turnaround. I thought it is important to emphasize these points clear and, deci and the decisive leadership and energetic team and a message that resonates. It's important to highlight these because your message during the campaign and while you're in government must resonate with the people. 
because these will be the key ingredients if you want to repeat the success of four years ago. But my long history in politics, 20 years as an MP, and my now six consecutive victories, victorious campaigns have taught me that winning, as hard as it is, is the easier path. Keeping the vision, touching lives, transforming the society are the more difficult paths. Which brings me to one of the general points of my presentation, with political experience teaching me that to be successful in politics, we all must learn and master the art of perfecting the imperfect. I know that in your case, you had a unique situation, a three-way coalition where the needs and visions of your party were not the only thing in the equation. The process of unity, as desired as it is, brings its own challenges, its own tensions, and indeed, oftentimes, its own contradictions. How is PAM dealing with those challenges and tensions? And how is your party reconciling the contradictions? And a crucial question that has no answer, easy answer is how you keep your identity while submitting your movement to the biggest desirable, the greater good. Restless supporters, even though they will make specific demands, and many times rightfully so, must always temper those by understanding one the context and history of this united movement, and two, what is the ultimate end game? Every argument, every expectation must be marinated with a dose of political reality. Going forward, Pam's greatest contribution to the unity concept is to make sure that the party is in the best position to defend the seats it, it now holds in the parliament, and then to look to pick up others. And your biggest challenge will rekindle the hope and the brotherly and sisterliness that inspired the winner four years ago, while getting skeptics to understand that your greatest currency is still in what's possible. The people's time is at hand to judge you, not by the difficult things you have failed to do, but by the honesty and genuineness you have displayed, by the respectful openness in which you have discussed the contradictions that have eluded you, and your seeming ability to still make good on the promise of the change that you so inspired four short years ago. The big obvious difference between now and then, though, is that you now have a record to defend. For the unity concept to succeed, the next chapter must not be about the bad old days, or about the system you defeated, nor about the leaders that represent your period of pain, but about the future of the boy from Kayon and the girl from Halfway Tree. Whose biggest concern is what space are you helping to make for them in a changing world? Unless they can align their aspiration with your vision, then unity will remain a hallowed concept that has no practical meaning to the young voters who will determine the results of the next elections. And unless you are, can align their aspirations with your vision, then I must repeat, unity will remain a hollow concept that has no practical meaning to the young voters who will determine the results of the next elections. And unless you can convince them that yours is a genuine replacement of the old order and that it is not the old politics as usual, then they will maintain their right to be cynical and to either opt out of this process or act in rebellion against the process. A frustrated people many times will vote against something without stopping to wonder exactly what they are voting for. 
These are the dangers that lie ahead and that you must guard against. Does the wider society believe they got change or exchange or shall change? For you to win again, the people must still believe that your victory is still theirs, that hope springs eternal, and that the dream lives, and that this dream will never die. But how can you do that if the people sense that you, you yourselves have become cynical? It is all right to ask tough questions, even among yourself. It is perfectly okay to demand more and to demand better, but ransom ill discipline could derail even the most worthwhile journey. From all reports, your government, your unity team government with Pam as part, has done well. And the economy in Sinkis and Nevis is among the strongest in the Caribbean. But we are in a PAM convention, and you must ask, has your party done equally, equally as well? Have you kept the links to all soldiers, maintained the links to the community, not seeming to be more important or, or too busy to be spoken to? I came here to get you laser focus because it is in your hands. But sometimes, as politicians, we forget to do an introspection so that we can pass the inspection. For how can we fight a successful war if the frontline troops are not inspired or motivated? And if the onlookers think that you see faithfulness as a disposal commodity, for in the end, you may be judged more harshly, not by the services you delivered or not delivered, but by the humility you show to ordinary people, by the faithfulness you show to all soldiers, by your resistance of the temptation to be arrogant, to act as lord over everybody else, to feel that you are beyond criticism and beyond scolding. I can tell you these words because I had fallen prey to these things. And I had to do self-check. So I don't come here to put down Pam. I come here to let Pam know that once you pay attention to these things like I had to do, then you will get more. More victory, more seats, more support, and more for St. Kitts and Nevis with Team Unity. Humility is not a weakness, it is a strength. Life has taught me that our people can forgive shortcomings, but we have to make them feel that we who are so asking for it are worthy of it. For unity to success, there must also be trust and mutual respect. Too many times in the Caribbean we spend more time tearing down than uniting. We have to understand in this coalition, none is more important than the other. But you are not the least either. You must demand respect and you must give it. To keep unity alive, you must continually work at it. It's like a marriage. If you don't attend to it, if you don't pay attention, to the needs of your partners, it can end in divorce and acrimony and a situation where nobody wins. And I pray God against that for team unity. Imperfect unity is a better place to be than perfect disunity. That said, do not underestimate the PAM brand, nor do you dilute it for doing so will also do a disservice to the quest for unity. Let the Pam brand be the glue that keeps this pack together.
together you will always achieve more. Turn, I want you to turn to your neighbor on the left. And let's become an interactive. Turn to your neighbor on the left and say, neighbor, neighbor. I am holding myself accountable. Turn to your neighbor on the right and say, neighbor, neighbor. I am holding myself accountable. Turn to your neighbor on the left and inform them that neighbor, neighbor. I am holding you accountable. Turn to your neighbor on the right and inform them that neighbor, neighbor. I am holding you accountable. Because if we succeed, it's because of me and you. Can I tell you that on this journey, you must hold yourself accountable. More so, can I tell you that you must hold each other accountable. Remember, no one does what's expected, only what's inspected. You must inspect yourself, inspect each other, inspect Pam, and inspect team unity. So that you can get what you're expecting. I come to you today as a friend and as an observer, but also too as a member of the wider Caribbean fraternity. I come to you also as one of the strongest believers in regional unity. And so I also want to allude to the concept of unity on a regional basis. Because Pam and every other party in Sinkis and Nevis for that matter, must come to realize that for you to deliver on the promise of a better way for your people, there is no better way than to act as one united Caribbean. That too, like your own internal unity project, might also have its own contradictions. But it is not just a worthwhile endeavor. It is a strategic and developmental necessity like in your local attempt at political unity on the regional level it is counterproductive to complain only about the imperfections the strategy must be in our collective abilities to perfect an imperfect imperfect situation understanding that the global is noble desirable and necessary since coming to office a few short months ago as Premier of the Virgin Islands, our government has made it a robust and aggressive policy to move on many fronts so that the BVI can be an integral part of this regional unity process. Indeed, my first overseas assignment as Premier was to the OECS Authority meeting in Guadeloupe. We have also joined the Association of Caribbean States and I had the pleasure to attend the recent head meetings in Nicaragua. We have long accepted the notion and the understanding that we not only have a shared history in the Caribbean, but a shared destiny. And that the option is to either go forward boldly together or stumble separately into irrelevance. My ideas on this issue are not new. They are just more urgent. We must find meaningful ways and not excuses to strengthen economic and cultural ties, to share resources and ideas, and to build our societies as one. Our generation only now have the duty to consolidate and formalize the commitment to unity that our forefathers made. We are at a different junction in our emergence from colonialism and exploitation. But make no bones about it. We are on the same match, just a different, at different positions in that match to dignity and complete self-respect. Issues of more open economies, sharing of information, and people-to-people -people exchanges are crucial elements of building this regional platform of unity of which we speak. This Virgin Islands Party, of which I'm the chairman for in the British Virgin Islands, is fully committed to this integration process, understanding that our similar histories and our shared aspirations bind us together inseparably. We are determined to take practical and symbolic steps 
to show our own commitment to the concept of regional unity. When we came into office in late February this year, we took an immediate decision to set up a committee to urgently look into the status situation of thousands of people, most of them from the Eastern Caribbean, including Sinkis and Nevis, who have made the BVI home. Many of these people have lived and worked in the BVI more than 15 years. Many of them have given birth and raised their children there, yet they have no official status. We have set about to fix that situation and to afford more residency and permanent status arrangements to many of these families who have been kept in limbo and forced to live a life of uncertainty, uncertainty all these years. Thousands of people will have their dignity respite and we, as we make a significant down payment on this regional unity and solidarity concept. Over 100 people have been so recognized within the first 100 days of my administration, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. So as we go through that administrative process, we believe that there are many more who will have qualified and for whom we shall do right by. We are one Caribbean and we must start to act that way. The tide of anti-immigrant sentiment shall not be allowed to be washed up on our shores and to deposit inherent cohesive phobia or corrosive phobia, sorry, for indeed within this Caribbean civilization, a BVI Islander, nor a Ketishan, nor an division must be regarded as a foreigner. The fear of our neighbors is not a currency we must trade in since peace and development come through both understanding and our enduring sense of community within the Caribbean. United we stand in this divided world. Whether it's your local politics, like you are here doing tonight, and among your coalition partners like you have with Team Unity, or it is on the broader regional front, the forces of negativity and division is strong and tempting. Chaos and disunity are always tempting forces that give an adrenaline rush, the proverbial fruit in the Garden of Eden. But that fruit is rotten to the core. Eating of that fruit will lead to our destruction and our disbarment. Instead, we must allow ourselves to be called uh, to a higher altar, one that forces us to trade the ambition of the tribe for the greater good that can come to terms with the contradictions and make perfect, even in perfect situations. For we must never let the yearning of the perfect or for the perfect be the enemy of the good. The yearning for unity is a flame that must keep on burning. For it is the only flame that will light up the corner of our world. Now I want you to be interactive as I close one last time. And I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am Pam, I am and, Pam is me. and Pam is me. Turn to your neighbor on your right and say, I am Pam, I am Pam. and Pam is, me. Pam is me. I want you to high five your neighbor on the left and say, Pam is in my DNA. I want you to high five your neighbor on your right and say, Pam is in my DNA. I want you to hold your neighbor on the left and right and say, together, yeah. we, are team unity. we are Team Unity. And together, and together. We, will we will be successful. Winning more, more. starting here, Start here in Convention 54. In convention 54. God bless you.